Now let's talk about keypads. They're a great way of getting user input into your project. This one happens to be similar to those old electric telephones, and it uses a matrix type of connection. We'll talk a little more about that in just a bit. There are also these kind of membrane keypads, which I think are really great because they're waterproof and you can clean them a lot easier. They're silent. They're a little harder to press, but this is the one I want to take a look at today. The other thing I really like about these, you're never going to pay more than about $4 for this. So what an easy way to add user input into your project. So how are we going to use this? Well, this relies on a library, the keypad library. So let's go ahead and install that and take a look at how to wire it up. So I'll launch my Arduino. And just like before, we go to sketch, include library, manage library. And I search for keypad and here it is. And we want the latest version and just click install. That's all done. And then I like to quit out of Arduino and launch it again. Now we can go into examples, keypad, and we're going to go to multi-key. And when we take a look at the multi-key code, I like to quickly look right here and look at the layout of the numbers. One, two, three, then star, zero, pound. So sometimes they're laid out a little bit different. These two could be swapped or you could have more numbers, less numbers, special keys, but this one matches perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire it up, which is really easy. I'm going to use these mail-to-mail -mail wires. And if I have seven of them and I hold them nice and tight, I can basically plug this keypad right into there. And then I can plug these, holding these fairly tight. I can grab seven of them anyway or sorry, six of them and plug them in right here because that's what the code calls for. If you read it, it tells you we're using pins two through eight. Now that's all plugged in. I can plug my Arduino in. It's getting a little unwieldy with all these wires everywhere. There we go. And I can quickly go check Arduino's right and the right port. Awesome. Upload it. This should start blinking. There it is. Let's open up my serial monitor. And you can see when I press one, it says key four was pressed press four, it says five. That's not right. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to go to the product page and take a look at the code. So this has rows four, columns three, and we can go back and check. Do we have the same thing? Rows four, columns three. That looks okay. Byte rows pins eight, seven, six, five. Ah, here we go. These two are switched. So if we just paste that in there and upload that, and now let's test it one more time. Ah, there we go. Press one and one right here is idle. Now let's go through them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And there's star, and there's the pound key. So why does that matter? Well, if we look through the code, we have this array right here and that looked fine, but our rows and column pins were different. So when reading the array, we were actually reading it more vertically rather than horizontally. What I wanted to show you here is I kind of knew that it wasn't going to work because on the product page, it tells you you have to check that code. So when you're working with sensors or keypads in particular, make sure you read how these are laid out because sometimes they're connected this way and sometimes they're connected this way. And depending on how that's connected internally, you change the pins and the way that the code works. We were able to resolve that very quickly and easily. And you should be able to as well, as long as you have that code that is commented really well. And if you're using the keypad library for Arduino, 
it makes it very easy because almost every line in here has a comment telling you what's going on. And this is a great example of why I like to use the big websites for buying my Arduinos and my sensors and components. Because if I were to buy this from some generic place, maybe I'd save a couple of dollars. But the reality is I'm not going to have the really great code and it saves me tons of time. If I were to buy a generic keypad, it could be wired completely differently and I could spend hours trying to figure it out. But in this case, I was able to just grab the code from Adafruit's website, paste it in, and I'm good to go. I'm prototyping, everything works great. And the last thing I wanna worry about is code and how this all works. I wanna build my prototypes and move on.